YouTube. Um, this is my first live. Uh, <laughs> I just had to set up the camera there. Um, yeah, and then run around. Uh, and nobody's watching anyway, so <laughs> I'm all good. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Cara from Cara Lee Ford Ceramics. And I just thought I would do a bit of a live um, session today. So if you don't know me and my channel, I've been doing uh, all the challenges set on the Great Pottery Throwdown, the new series which has just started on uh, Channel 4. And this is week four now of those challenges. And um, yeah, this is going to be hand building a uh, coil built bars. So I'm just going to be here chatting to you about pottery, about what I'm doing, about some of the techniques um, that I'm using when I'm hand building. And yeah, I, this is my first YouTube live. So I don't really know how they work. I don't know if people can ask questions or if um, <laughs> there's comments available, I don't know. So if you have a question and you know how to ask it, then maybe ask it. And if I can, I will certainly answer. Um, I would absolutely love it if anyone who ends up watching this takes a moment to like and subscribe to my channel, just because it really, really helps little makers like me um, to create more videos, more helpful videos like this one uh, for you guys at home. So I hope you can see me okay. Um, this is, I'm kind of set up to just hopefully get in everything that I'm doing. Um, I'm using this clay today, which is, um, it's a Silbeco Scandi. It's actually a throwing clay, um, but it has got a little bit of grog in it. So hopefully it's going to be okay for hand building. I may well adjust the camera at certain points just to kind of help you see better. Um, so you're just going to have to excuse me when I'm moving around the tripod. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. Um, so if you guys haven't seen uh, the episode that went live on went um, live on Sunday here in the UK, um, the contestants on the show had to hand build uh, an extension of uh, already constructed bars. So the bars that they were presented with was kind of this big. And it, I'm not sure whether it was already um, coiled or it had been thrown, but it was leather hard. And so they were building up an extension of a pot that already existed. Now what I'm gonna do, because I don't have um, a ready-made vase that's like this big, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to just start from scratch using just this as a base. So I'm not going to be able to kind of build that like ex elaborate extension thing like, that they had on the show, um, but I am aiming to get as tall as possible. I'm going to give myself 30 minutes because I just, <laughs> I don't want to go on forever because the coil pot let me tell you, they take quite a while to construct. I think the contestants on the show had an hour, but obviously they had this bottom vase to contend with as well, and I don't have that. So I'm just gonna give myself 30 minutes, see how I go, see where we get to, and yeah, it's just gonna be a bit of fun, hopefully. So here we go. Um, this clay that I've already wedged up, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start breaking like chunks off and when you create coils it's a good idea just to kind of manipulate the clay in your hands to begin with and get it into like a fat sausage shape. I might actually bring you a little bit closer, do you think that would help so that you can see what I'm doing better? Bear with me, I'm going to just move the camera very, very slightly. There we 
go. I think that's better. You can see me a little bit better now. Okay, so I have four people watching. Yay! <laughs> Thank you to everyone who is watching. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting many people to show up, by the way, um, just because I kind of didn't really like tell many people about it. I put it over on my Instagram, but um, yeah, that was about it. It's just a little test really to see how one of these goes and um, you know it means that I can still give you a pottery video this week whereas I was kind of racking my brains as to thinking how I was going to do that if I didn't have this big vase already constructed. Um, so yeah this is kind of just a, a fun alternative. So here is my first sausage and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start gently rolling it out. I'm going to remove my scales because they tend to rattle around um, when I'm moving about on the table and that might be quite annoying for you. So here is my coil and you can cut, there are a few different ways that you can make coils. Um, one way is by doing this which is just throwing the clay down onto a surface and that kind of starts extending out that clay making it longer and thinner which is what you want and obviously there is just kind of the old-fashioned rolling it in your hands so when you're making coils the tendency is is for the clay to kind of flatten a little bit um, just because if there's uneven pressure at any point, which is easily done, um, the clay tends to, to go into like a flat sausage and then it will start kind of bouncing along your table surface, which can be a little bit frustrating and also that can make the flattening worse. So what you can do is you can just use your hands to squish the clay back into more of a round sausage shape and just use the, the weight of your hands you don't need a lot of pressure to make coils you just need like the lightest pressure and I can feel there that this clay is starting to flatten again so I'm just gonna squish it back into more of a round coil shape and I'm working on a plaster bat here but you can also use just an MDF board, which I've got down here. Either or is absolutely fine. Basically, you just want an absorbent surface. So something that isn't that the clay isn't going to stick to. So as you can see, my coil has got a lot longer. And because it's starting to get quite unwieldy, I'm just going to chop it in half so that I can make it thinner and longer and work with a bit more of a, um, a manageable amount. And as you're rolling your clay, um, if you do start getting that kind of flattening, another trick that you can do is just do a little half twist, a little like helix twist, and then roll it again. And that twist makes the clay kind of go back into like a circle rather than a flat sausage. And I use that quite a lot when I'm coiling. Not that I coil a lot, to be honest, um, but when I do, I always tend to use that trick. So here we go. So it's a little bit awkward where I'm sat. Um, normally I would do this stood up, but that means that I would be, you'd be really far away from me because to get like me into in the frame and what I'm doing in the frame is quite tricky. So yeah. So as you can see, this has got long again. And now what time is it? So I started at three o'clock. I'm just gonna go until half three and just see where we get to. I'm not anticipating this video doing <laughs> anything amazing on, on YouTube just because I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of showing up and just kind of doing it. 
and seeing where we get to really. So there we go, so that's kind of my first coil. Now, the coil that you want to aim for is you want the thickness to be the same, relatively the same as your base. Um, so that's kind of like the end thickness. So in actual fact, it needs to be probably about the thickness of your finger or your thumb. And um, because you're squishing the clay together, a lot of that clay is going to be lost because you're kind of squishing it into, into itself. Um, so the final thickness will actually be a little bit thinner than the coils that you're creating. Hope that makes sense. Ah, oh, someone's liked my video. Thank you, <laughs> whoever you are. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. Okay, so I've got this little scoring tool here, which is a metal kidney with um, a serrated edge. So I'm just gonna score around the edge of my base. And this will give a little bit of tooth for the clay to stick together. So scoring it all the way around. So this base has, I've left it out for maybe an hour or two, so it's a little bit firmer than it would be fresh out of the bag. Ah, five people have liked my video. Oh, thanks guys, you're so sweet. Um, so yeah, so I've scored the bottom of my base. Oh, hello everybody. So, um, Ahmed says, after finish live, please share it. I will, yes, of course, absolutely. So I've got my coil and I'm going to do a scrape down one side of my coil just to get a little bit of clay roughed up and that will help it stick to my base. And I'm also going to get a little bit of water with my brush. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit of water on that scored edge. I don't want to put too much on just because you don't want to get it very wet because otherwise wet clay it starts to collapse and you eventually might find that you know it just becomes too wet in order to continue working with it. So I'm going to get my coil. I'm going to actually put it on here so you can see it a little bit better. There we go, is that better? And I'm just going to start coiling that around and I'm going to score on the top again. I'm not going to add any water, any more water, just because I feel like this clay is actually quite wet already. I'm going to just use that coil all the way around. There we go. Okay, it doesn't look like much now, guys. <laughs> it looks a little bit kind of like a toad, I think. <laughs> I'm just going to bear with it. I'm going to keep going. Coil pots tend to look rather ropey at the beginning and they get better as you go along. So this is uh, just a bamboo little sculpting tool and I'm going to use that just to squish those two parts of clay together. You don't even have to use this kind of tool, you could just use your fingers if you wanted. But I find it's quite useful to really get that clay kind of moving. Tricky for you guys to see what I'm doing, but I'm just, I'll keep turning it around so you can still, you can hopefully see what I'm up to. I'll do it like around like this so you can see. It's 
So here we go. Getting all the way around. I'm starting from the outside and then I'm gonna work on the inside after that. You can do it whichever way round you like. You don't have to go from the outside first, you can go from the inside first. Um, if, there any other, if there are any coil potters watching, then let me know which way round you do it, whether you do the inside first and then the outside, or the outside then the inside. I mean, as long as you've got like a really nice seal on one side, I guess you could leave, you could even leave the kind of the, um, you know, the coil texture as it is, maybe, I don't know. And then I'm actually going to use my thumb on the inside, just because I feel like I can get my fingers in a little bit better. So where are you guys watching from today? Let me know in the comments, because you can comment. I've seen them, I've seen the comments come up. So yeah, let me know where you're watching from. I'm in the southwest of England, um, in a county called Somerset, which is as beautiful as it sounds. I'm very lucky. Okay, it's kind of my first layer. Now I'm going to make my second coil. I'm going to use my helix, little helix trick, just to smooth that out. And as I'm rolling out the clay, I'm just kind of spreading my fingers like this as I'm rolling and that encourages the clay to stretch out and get longer and thinner which is what I want. So the guys on the show, um, they were tasked with making this extension to an already existing vase and they had to make it as flamboyant as possible and um yeah i won't i won't give anything away um but they were really really brilliant uh, amazing plots that they made and yeah if you haven't watched it then do watch it uh, I know you guys in the US, you're waiting for it to come out there, but it will it will come out later in the year. Don't worry, I won't put any, any spoilers in my videos. So someone was watching from Denver in the US. Hello, Denver. Amazing. Isn't pottery fantastic that it connects people from all these different places all over the world? Isn't that incredible? And before the internet, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So here we go, it's my second coil. So this one's a little bit shorter. I don't know how much height I'm going to get in the next 15 minutes. But I'll try my best. Okay, so I'm going to get my... Where's my metal kidney, here it is, serrated kidney, score the top and then score that bit and get a little bit of water. So has anyone fancied applying to the show? <laughs> Let me know if you would go on the show. So a little known fact about me is that I applied to the very first series of the show, The, the Great Pottery Throwdown. And um, yeah, I got down to the last 20 applicants 
um, so this was back in 2014. Um, and I didn't get on the show. I found it very overwhelming to have the cameras like right in my face and having to throw a pot at the same time and also answering the questions that they're asking you. I found it just like, I just couldn't cope with all of the different things. So someone, Sakara Collins says, I'm watching from your doorstep, not literally, but Somerset too. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so cool. Kari, you freaked me out then a little bit. <laughs> I thought you were like literally outside my house. Oh, that's awesome. And you have a very cool name. Although yours is spelt with a C, not a K. <laughs> your description on your blog inspiration is what I mean when I think about pottery. Greetings from Serbia. Oh my gosh, hello. Hello, Serbia. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Here you go, here's my third coil. Now guys, I'm not getting very much height here, but I'm having a nice time chatting to you. Yeah, I'm really, um, I'm so impressed with the contestants on the show that they can throw a pot on the wheel they can answer questions and they are not intimidated by all the camera and the crew who must be, you know, really quite close to them whilst they're working, which, you know, I just find, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, in my audition, I was fine with like the, the different stages. So they break up the stages at first, well, in, in the auditions back when I did it. Um, they broke up the stages, so they got you throwing first, and then they got you doing some hand building, and then you did like a little screen test separately. But then when it came to like doing it all together, all at the same time, I was just like, mm -mm, I can't do this. Yeah. But that was back before I was a potter. So I have been a full-time potter for coming up to eight years. Um, and I actually worked in marketing before that. So this was when I had like my day job and um, just being on the show just made me realize that pottery is what I wanted to do. Just, sorry, just being in the auditions for the show made me realize that pottery was what I wanted to do full time. And meeting all those other people who were doing pottery in one way or another. Um, yeah, it was just really inspirational and just really made me think, I'm gonna give this a go and see what happens. And here I am, eight years later, talking to you fine people, making a very bad coil pot <laughs> on a sunny Tuesday afternoon in my pottery studio. So they do say that everything happens for a reason, right? And I think maybe I wasn't supposed to be on the show, but I was supposed to go to that audition process. Here we go. Okay, my pot is getting bigger, guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, with my fingers and thumbs, I'm just kind of squishing the walls a little bit just to even them out and thin them out. So the bars on the show that the contestants had to make needed to be 30 centimetres and that's really tall so 30 centimetres is like is this and that's really really tall you can see like how much more I would need to do. So I've got massive respect for the guys that are on the show. They do such an incredible job with what they make and what they end up creating at the end. So here we go. So even though my top is very like this, it's very wavy, very wobbly, 
I'm not going to worry too much about that because I can just cut that off at the end. So I'm just going to keep making some more coils and keep going. So I am going to save this video uh, to my channel so you can watch it back um, or watch it again. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments below and I will happily answer them. So coiling is a really awesome way of making pottery if you don't have a wheel. So you can literally make anything out of coils. Um, that you can make on the wheel. In fact, you can probably make more using coils than wheel throwing because, you know, you can kind of come back to your pot day after day. As long as you cover it with some plastic so it doesn't dry out, you can keep building, keep adding, and you can make huge pots, really big sculptural things. I mean, people throw huge pots on the wheel but it's much harder to keep continuing to, you know, make a, a big pot day after day after day. Whereas with coiling, you can. It's quite a, a time consuming process, but I find it a really relaxing one too. So if I was making this quill pot um, for real, so I'm probably not going to keep this pot. <laughs> Not my best work. Um, but if I was making it for real, what I would probably do is I would make a whole ton of coils and lay them out in front of me and then I would just start building. But because I wanted to show you guys like all of the different stages of the process, that's probably a little bit boring for you just to watch me you know, rolling out a whole load of coils rather than showing you kind of the construction as well. So if you guys are interested in learning pottery, um, I wrote a book last year. Um, in fact, I wrote it in 2020 and it was published last year. Uh, it's called Pottery for Beginners and it includes everything you need to know in order to just get started with pottery. So you don't need to have any previous experience at all. I talk you through everything. And you can get it from all of your usual favorite bookshops online and in person. And there's loads of colorful pictures in there and there's 10 projects that I talk you through from start to finish. Um, five hand building, five throwing projects, enough to really get you going. Um, so Lulu said, I just saw that book in the library. Ah, amazing. Thank you, Lulu. Yeah, it was mind blowing. When I saw it in a library, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. My book's in a library. Yeah, so you can also get it from the library. And I talk you through firing pottery and glazing and lots of different decoration techniques as well, all suitable for beginners. Cara says, I have it, I love it. Ah, I have made a couple of your projects, that's so cool. And that is, good morning from Florida. Hello, Florida. And VM says, how long have you been teaching? Would you suggest following a book or a course? So um, I have been teaching pretty much for, I would say, it was quite early on that I started teaching. So I've been doing pottery for about 15 years and I've been doing it full time eight years. And I probably started teaching in my second year of doing it full time. Um, and if you are kind of, you know, you're 
you are a little bit beyond the beginner stage and you are like a budding, budding hobby potter, then I actually have an online um, pottery club where I share tutorials with you and all of my best tips and tricks from all of my years of making. And that's hosted over on Patreon, so you guys are probably familiar with Patreon. And you can join for just $11 plus taxes, um, if that's re relevant for where you are. And you can join up for as long as you want and you can cancel any time and I won't think any less of you. Um, but I share a new tutorial every single month. And we have a little Facebook group as well, where people share what they've been making. And we um, do troubleshooting over there. And I do the occasional live, um, something that I call Pottery Clinic, where I ask everyone to bring their pottery problems and conundrums and projects, and I will help them with those things. So yeah, if you are interested in either of those, then have a little look at my website. I will also share the link underneath this video as well. Um, I think I can do that. I've never done one of these before, so I don't know. So here we go. So my pot is probably getting to be about, well, it's about four inches now. And I'm swiftly running towards the end of my half an hour. So I'm just gonna, this is gonna be probably more like a bowl <laughs> rather than a vase. Um, it's because I've been chatting to you guys instead of concentrating on making. But I'm just gonna show you one last thing before I go, which is how to kind of finish your coil pots to make them look nice and professional and a little bit less messy because my pot's looking quite messy right now. But I'm all right with it. I'm not giving myself a hard time about this because this was just supposed to be a fun thing to do and it was an excuse to kind of chat to you lovely people and often pottery isn't about the end product. I mean, it is if you're you know, making it for a living, you, you want it to be good, right? But if you're just learning or you're just a hobby potter, then pottery really is about the process rather than the end result. So here we go. Now I've just kind of sealed up this side here with my bamboo uh, little sculpting tool and in order to create like a really nice finish on the outside of my pot or even the inside of your pots is I'm going to use my serrated kidney again so this is what I was using to score the coils to join them together and I'm just going to use it all over the outside of my pot and you're probably thinking oh god Cara what are you doing you're crazy you're gonna ruin it but actually by scoring the outside like I am now by roughing it up what I'm gonna do next will mean that it will become lovely and smooth again so then I'm gonna take a rubber kidney like this one and I'm just gonna smooth it along the scored bits of clay that I just scored and I hope you'll be able to see if I move it forward a little bit I hope you'll be able to see that the pot actually looks much much smoother and probably a little bit better and has a more professional finish than it did before. I mean, let's not look at, talk about this side. <laughs> let's just talk about this side. 
But obviously, if you're doing this at home with your own pots, you can take much more time over it and you can be much more kind of mindful of the finished shape and where you're going with it just by using kind of those techniques that I shared with you today. One last thing, if you have your pot and it's kind of like wobbly like this, like mine is, so all the coils are kind of, you know, they were probably slightly different thicknesses and um, I haven't done a very good job of like squeezing them all together here, but if I did and the, the top was still a, a little bit wobbly and I didn't want it to be wobbly, what you can do is using your needle tool, so a skinny needle tool like this, and you can just slice into the top of your pot and score it all the way around. And I'm using a, um, a turntable like this, and that makes it really easy to keep your tool, your needle tool, in the same place and then you'll get an even top because you're going to cut that bit off. So I'm going to just cut that off and go all the way around. And if you have kind of gaps anywhere, then the beauty of hand building is you can just add a bit back in. So I've got a little gap here. I'm just going to add a little bit of clay back in. And squish it together. So as you can see, on this side, <laughs> I've got kind of a bowl shape appearing. And now, if this was real life and I was making this to keep, I would obviously spend a lot more time on the inside, squishing those coils together and making sure that they were really nice and secure. But because I'm not gonna keep this bowl, I'm just doing it to show you guys some techniques. I'm not going to spend too much time kind of making it look any better. <laughs> oh, someone says they think it looks amazing. That's very sweet, but I think you're being, I think you're being kind. <laughs> it's okay. I know this bowl is, is not my best work. It's, it's not going to be going in any museums anytime soon. So there we go. That is my ropey coil pot. Um, but I hope that I shared a few useful techniques with you and um, that you can go away and use yourselves. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, then pop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel because that really, really helps me make more videos like this one and like the other videos that I made for you, go check them out. So I made a video for week one, which was throwing um, as many milk jugs as you can in 15 minutes. Week two um, was throwing three nesting bowls, or two nesting bowls, no, three nesting bowls blindfolded. That one's a good one. And last week, uh, the video that I shared was me throwing an old fashioned hot water bottle. That was really hard. So go back and have a look at those previous videos. Um, they're not lives, they are pre-recorded, but however, I try to kind of keep them um, as unedited as possible. So I'm throwing in real time. I'm not chopping, you know, bits together from lots of different videos. It's all just one kind of um, take. Um, so you can really get a feel of, of how it feels to throw under those conditions. 
Um, but I'll be back next week. Will I be back next week? Oh, no, I won't be back next week because I'm actually going away next weekend. Um, but I will be back very soon with another video um, recreating the Great Pottery Throwdown Challenges. And don't forget to check out my Patreon or my book. And I hope to see you on YouTube again very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, you're going to see me turn the camera off now because I need to turn the camera off. <laughs> How do I do it? <laughs>